Hello, John Rob in conversation with Sean Ryder about his wild, eclectic life, his new status as a national treasure, his current solo album, his books, and his future. Uh, John Rob here interviewing Sean Ryder. He's going to give me some tips on how to be a rock star. How to be a rock star. Yeah. You spent 40 years practicing. Did you ever find out how to be a rock star? Listen, I was not, I don't think, I mean, I suppose, I mean, uh, how to be uh, an indie kid in an indie band doesn't sound as good as how to be a rock star. <laughs> I don't think we was ever rock stars. I mean, you know, Black Grape, I suppose, for the couple of years that, that existed, being on a, on a major, was uh, probably the nearest... Uh, we ever got, I ever got, but uh, yeah, how to be a rock star, it does sound better than how to be in an indie band. Indie how to be a knobhead in a knobhead indie band. <laughs> <laughs> what I really like about the book, and probably about a lot of stuff you've done, you always feel like somebody on the outside kind of looking in, but the concept's brilliant though, I think it's Yeah, I mean, look, the, the book really, it's how I got the idea. I, I, and the idea was sort of, you know, going around in my head, it was like the Peter Crouch one, how to be a football star, football player, you know, uh, where, you know, it was all tongue in cheek and, and you know, and, and giving tips on how not to drive your Golf GTI into a swimming pool or why not, why, why it's not a good idea if you've always got loads of Class A's on you to start throwing televisions out of uh, windows in hotels. I mean, that's basically why we never did anything like that, yeah. you know, because yeah. you just didn't want to get nicked, you know, in Japan, carrying shitloads of heroin or what else we had stashed. So th there was some kind of wisdom even when you were Oh, young. absolute wisdom, yeah. You know, you just, you know, I mean, I spent a lot of time on a glass toilets in various airports in the world, you know, and I mean, and in America as well. I mean, and Americans are really funny because they're not like the English, right? Where the English can't wait to get your fucking clothes off you. You know, they just love getting your, you know, getting your grumps off and, and having you stood there naked, you know, when, when all the customs women coming along and have a look. They, you know, they just love it and the men. But in America, they won't, they, the last resort is strip searching you. So what do they do? Do they try and um, sort of ask you so many questions, they trip you up? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they'll, they'll interrogate and they'll threaten certain things, you know. Uh, uh, you know, beatings or threatened strip searches, like when it's like, you know, the first thing, you know, I was expecting was to get your kit off and you sit there fucking naked, do you know what I mean? That's what I was yeah. used to. So, uh, yeah, so, you know, that was uh, that was our main reason for never getting, I mean, we always ended up seemed to get in trouble, you know, getting nicked by undercover police and, and stuff. I mean, were you like a target? I mean, because your reputation... Went no, not in America. I mean, you know, I mean, the only time we ever got a target, really, was uh, was Brazil. You know, when I, when a journalist, you know, asked me, was I bringing uh, ecstasy in the country to sell? And, and thinking, what a ridiculous question. I just answered, well, yeah, I'm going to bring <laughs> thousands of me in the country to sell. You know, and it ended up on their front page of their Daily Mirror, didn't it? Oh, then they were like... Well, as soon as we... When we landed on the plane, you know, and you've got, like, George Michael and all the other, you know, bigger, important lot in front of us. But uh, when they came on the plane in, in uniformed up police and plain clothed and walked to the front, at the front of the plane and called us out, Happy Mondays to get up and come off the plane with them. So we was took off first. Was there a big cheer? Uh, I don't, I can't remember any cheering. There was certainly a few, ooh, because you know, like, you know, I mean, certain knobheads in our band, you know, were taking cocaine and, and things to fucking South America. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so, you know, yeah, when we got up and, and led off, and then we ended up going all the way through the airport, kept opening doors and going through other rooms and this and that. And then last door it opened, you know, and we thought, oh, this is it. And it opened and it was bright sunlight and they just fucking led us. We didn't even go through passport control. Somebody who, it's all corrupt, isn't it? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, so a backhander. Who we know who was over there, who was very friendly with the right people, managed to get us off and... 
the promoters, because that's a gig where you play to 200,000 yeah, people, isn't yeah. it? So he's got to have a suitcase of cash. Well, it wasn't him, actually. Wasn't it? No, no, no it, was, it was another person. Yeah. So that day you felt like a rock star. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But the book's not just about drugs, though. It's a lot of stuff. It's some quite poignant bits as well. You know, the bit where you have to face yourself in the end as well. Well, again, I don't remember that because, look, like I say, I read the damn thing, right, which took me weeks to do the, uh, the audio book. As soon as I'd read, you know, a few lines, I, I don't retain them. So I retain nothing from the book because I don't remember it. You know, that's, that's it. I, I just don't retain it. Never have done. You know, that's why I didn't learn anything at, at school, because as soon as, you know, it was you, whatever was said in class, as soon as they finished, it had gone. You know, I, I came out knowing the Battle of Hastings. That was it. <laughs> what year was 1066. it? 1066. Well, you know, that, that's about the only thing that, that stuck in. I just don't retain, you know, stuff. I mean, I retain, you know, mad, stupid things, but... No, you know, so I've read the book and, and I still can't remember, you know, that's why I have to, when I'm doing interviews, don't ask me direct shit out of the book because I just fucking can't remember it. Yeah. I mean, in many ways, is the book um, a message to the younger Sean? You know, here's some advice to the younger... Well, it really wouldn't matter because what would I say to the younger Sean? Oh, younger Sean, you're ADHD, so stop everything you're doing now and go and get help when there's not even help for it. You know, and they don't know how to treat it. So what would a younger Sean do? He wouldn't have done anything. He just carried on doing what you do because of my condition, which is drinking and taking drugs and getting into shitloads of madness. Because that's what the condition does. Was it, was it a relief when you found out your ADHD? Certainly, uh, it, it, it certainly switched on the light and explained why. You know, because, you, you, you know, am I fucking stupid? I don't know my alphabet. I can't learn this, can't do that. You know, I mean, and that's why as a young kid, you know, I started uh, robbing and, and being a smart ass, you know. So, you know, you get cred. I mean, did they make you feel stupid at school? Well, I you just, it's weird because it's just you, isn't it? You know, you don't ask yourself when you're a kid, why can't I learn anything? You know, you know why it didn't seem important. I, I, you know, I didn't know my alphabet. You know, I just didn't learn, just didn't know it. That was it, no matter how hard I tried. So it's, when, it's 28, wasn't it? When yeah, you... when I, when I, yeah, and that was because of Trish at Jail's mother suggesting I, I sing it. About 26 or 28. Did that make a difference? When I sung it, I, yeah, that's, I mean, I still have to sing it. I, I can't just drop in it. I still have to sing it in my head now to, to get to a certain letter that I want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's, let's have a listen. Fuck off! <laughs> Could be like a massive later period hit. <laughs> you would put music to it, wouldn't you? And make a video. It would be great, yeah. Well, that video worked really well. A, B, C. <laughs> so, when, so when you find out your ADHD, did that make it sort of tidy your life up? Could you yeah, 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 yeah. Well, obviously, you know, and, and, and you can get help in it and therapy or whatever you want to call it and, and tips and stuff. You know, I think it was definitely a bit too late for me to start taking, uh, you know, amphetamine again because that's really how it's treated, you know. Is that, what, is that how they treat it? Yeah, well, you see, it doesn't, amphetamine doesn't speed an ADHD the person up, it focuses them and calms them down. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because your brain's completely wired different. So you were already, in a sense, doing that, don't Well, like I said, you know, I've said this is that, you know, that great fucking, I did this and that. When, when I first took heroin, and I, it's, you know, this is me, it's a very naughty bad drug and everything else, right? Kids don't go and do that. But when I f first took heroin, I felt, I fit inside my own skin. I didn't feel like my underpants was on back to front and, you know, stuck up the crack of my ass. I felt normal and I could focus. So it was kind of an accidental um, sort of fixing yourself, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and then, and, then, and for, for, for years, it, it, you know, it helped mask the symptoms. Then when I stopped, 
to see, you know, whatever that was stopping, all came back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, did you, I mean, when you brought up at school, when you were at school and they made you feel... Well, we, well, they made you feel stupid at school. No, well, you must, must have realised you were quite intelligent, really, because... Well, well, you see, it, it, it wasn't that you felt stupid. Basically, I was in set four, set four, which set four, set four for maths and English at our school was crowd control. And now as I think of that class as an adult, you know, now, everybody in that class would have had some sort of condition. You know, whether he was autistic, ADHD, ADDD, fucking millions, you know, uh, Tourette's, you name it. I mean, an ADHD is a fucking million of all, there's loads and different traits in it, you know, and not one person's ADHD is the same as another, you know. So uh, it wasn't that, I, you know, I was made to feel stupid because there I am in set four and that's it. So, you know, I'm just not the one who's... Uh, but, you, you know, I, you know, I wasn't stupid, you know, outside of class. Yeah, yeah. And did, did that make you feel bad or just... Well, like I just said, it's yeah. just what you do, do you know what I mean? I mean, I couldn't, I could never get to grips with playing football or rugby because I could never, under, could never get the rules, yeah. right? Any games that we tried, I couldn't get the rules. So I was always offside or I was either this or that, you know, or whatever we played. So... You know, uh, as a kid, and you start, you know, robbing and showing off and stuff like that, you know, that's, you know, you just become, you know, one of the boys. Yeah, and that was easier to... to well, that was more, more me, yeah. do you know what I mean? I, there, there is no offside. <laughs> there is no fucking rules to that. <laughs> you know, get any trouble in robbing, you know, apart from not, you don't get caught. And how did music fit into that? Was that kind of... An out the outlaw lifestyle continuing to something that was a little less outlaw or yeah and, you know music was always around our family you know my dad played my dad did his banjo and his accordion and you know he did the Irish clubs and the folk clubs and the comedian stuff and then in the cousins you know are all into music you know the carols and you know huge families so in all different types of music so you know music was always there but it wasn't something that thought of going into, you know, because, you know, I didn't play an instrument, you know, so it wasn't, I mean, and I've said it a million times, it was when I went to watch David the Dane Stardust that, and I watched David Essex playing Jim McLean that I went, I want that lifestyle, you know, don't want to dive an heroin overdose, but I want that, you know, you can just, you know, go around the world shagging and taking drugs and, and, and playing music. So it's more the lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, and the excitement and everything else. And, the, you know, and, and music sexy as well, you know what I mean? So it was, you know, that was what got me, I want to do that. But when you started getting in the rehearsal room and playing with the other guys in the band and you found, and you ended up by accident being the singer. Yeah. Did you find that was something that's very natural? Well, I ended up by default uh, being the songwriter. You know, because uh, everyone had to go and, and they was all terrible, you know, uh, and, and I was less terrible. <laughs> so I ended up being songwriter. I mean, I'm fucking about at school making poems up about teachers or other people in class. I'd always done that sort of thing, you know. Uh, so would those poems be similar to the lyrics, like a primitive version of the lyrics you'd eventually write, the same kind of... Except, you know, fucking rhyming nits and tits, you know, for maybe the same lyrics, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> when, when did you realise you were actually pretty good at writing lyrics? Uh, ooh, uh, oh, not, not for quite a while. I suppose by the time we got to, by the time we got to obviously making an album, I knew I was, I could do something. You know, and, and obviously a lot better than the others. Mm. You know, so, it, but uh, I suppose I accepted it uh, as being a, a lyricist by the time we do, I still were accepting it on Bummed. But certainly by the time Pills and Frills, I'd, I'd sort of fit into my slippers. But I would say really early on, you know, the stuff right from the first single is definitely a unique talent.
Yeah, I mean, certainly there was nobody around writing the sort of stuff I was writing, but then, you know, I mean, you would get, well, why aren't you writing songs like Ian Brown instead of this shit? <laughs> you know, I mean, that's what I got off band members, you know what I mean? So it's not the best for your fucking confidence, is it? And I'd be going, well, you know what I mean? If we was writing like fucking Ian Brown was writing, then we'd be Ian Brown and we wouldn't be doing what we're doing, you know what I mean? We'd be another band. But he was trying to write like you, so it's everyone's trying to be somebody else, aren't they? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if it's sounded right by me, but... I mean, what was the first one you wrote when you thought, fucking hell, this is actually not... This is pretty good, this. This is actually something something going on here. <sighs> I can't remember. I mean, again, when I could sort of... When I got onto the pop album, I suppose, you know, uh, Pills and Frills. The 24-hour party people. Yeah, I suppose 24-hour party people, yeah. Just the title on its own is a great title. Yeah, yeah. And I, I've always liked the way they're about your life and what you do but they sound surreal on like somebody on the on the out of space at the same yeah, time. Yeah I think we was all out of space. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. And that, now looking back do you think the ADHD helped with that? Uh, like give you a secret superpower? Well I've heard the super yeah I mean I've heard, I've heard the superpower one before which I find hilarious uh, but uh, yeah I mean certainly look if I'd have who knows what you had done you know if, if, if my brain was wired as a normal person's brain was wired, then the messages get to the other side. Uh, I, you know, uh, I, I just what, uh, yeah. I mean, what, what, in a how to be a rock star book, and you look back on those early days. Is there any advice you that to that band you give that time, or is anything you would change? Well, certainly, I, I think when I look back now, I think we were all should have had more confidence in ourselves, all of us. You know, we was doing something different. You know, and and, uh, and I suppose when you're doing something different, you know, a, a lot of us try to do something less different, if you know what I mean. Yeah. More fit, normal, sort of, you know. But, uh, yeah, you know, we, we, uh, we should have, uh, all should have had a bit more confidence in ourselves. Mm. You seem confident at the time, though. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, you would do, you know, full of whatever I was fucking, <laughs> you know, filling <laughs> myself up with just to feel normal. I mean, is that, was that Bezzy's role to be the, the confident one dancing about? Uh, I wouldn't say confident one dancing about, but certainly like, you know, my mate on stage, you know, I mean, it, it, I mean, I wanted Bezzy in the band anyway, because I was like thinking videos and shit, you know. I mean, we didn't have any front covers, so Bez come along, you know, and our first front cover was me and him with our hoods up. But it was, you know, I mean, we also wanted to make headlines and, and shit like that and live rock and roll you know, live rock and roll. So he was my partner living rock and roll outside the band, mm. you know, with drugs and adventures. And I just brought him in on it because I thought, well, he's going to look great on video, you know, because uh, video was like, you know, the coming in thing and everything. So, uh, and he'd look uh, totally different on stage. So he just uh, had to come, come in. Yeah, it was like having a front man split into two. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, it was. I mean, obviously, it was a certain extent of taking the attention off me, you know, as Which a front man. Which is interesting, you just didn't like the spotlight. Yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, because the other thing was, it's like, you know, you hear that one, well, I come alive and I'm a, a, when I go on stage, I'm alive and, and that's where I should be. And with me, I was like alive and showing off when I weren't on stage, but I walk on stage and I fucking crumble. Why is that? Is it just... No idea. Just didn't, you know, didn't want... You know, I didn't mind being looked at off, you know. Off yeah, yeah. It's not good for a front man, is it? He don't really want to be fucking looked at, you know, so... It's quite... It's always quite fascinating, though. I always thought the Sex Pistols were the same, you know. You, the young Johnny Rotten's the same. He was... He looked like he didn't really want to be there. Yeah. He could handle it as well. Yeah. I think it's very similar to what you... Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean... I mean, one of my fucking... You know, worst times was like when we had to sort of go out and start playing shows. You know, I I loved just getting in rehearsal room, or, you know, a room jamming and making music, you know, and, and, and listening to ourselves and playing for ourselves. I mean, that's what we always did anyway. We never we, we never wrote stuff or made music for a, an audience. It was always for us, you know. So how much did the ADHD play into that? You know, the stage thing, you know, the fear of the spotlight. Is that part of that or is that just another part of your personality? Uh, well, yeah, look, ADHD's really, it's, 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 you know, it's, uh, what's, it's contradictory as well. So 
you know, uh, yeah. It's, uh, it has a big part of the personality of the ADHD, yeah. So would that be part of that thing where stage fright or not like being on stage or not interested in being on stage, would that be part of that ADHD thing as well? I'm not, I'm not you know what, John, I've not worked that out yet. I've not, I've not got into... Well, it's just a natural thing. It's a weird thing to do, go on stage. Yeah, yeah. You know, it just comes with having to be in a band, doesn't it? You know what I mean? I had to, we had to be, I had to be in a band. They had to be doing that. There was nothing else except a shitload of trouble. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, once I'd been sat from a job, you know, 19 or whatever, you know, that was it. I was, you know, I was, I was going, you know, I was going, you know, getting locked up sooner or later. The band saved you, really. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. yeah. I mean, with the rock and roll lifestyle, what, what did you know? What did you think it was before you did it? Was it something you read about in papers? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. some well, you know, something I'd seen from you know, like you know, Mars bars in Fannies and you know, and and you know, sailing boats on the Thames and you know, you know, punk rock and you know, Elvis and girls and and all that sort and Beatles and fans and all sort, you know, all that and and that would have been Stardust. Yeah, did you ever feel like you got there, or did you always feel like you were gate crashing somebody else's party? Yeah, I've sort of got the imposter. You know, I still have the imposter thing going on. Yeah. So even I mean, you're quite good friends with people like Joe Strummer. Um, so you were kind of in that world. Out, out, out. Well, I wasn't really. I mean, me and Joe, I knew Joe, but I oh, was he more Bezzy's friend. Bezzy's mate, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I didn't really. Uh, I Bez hung, hung around a lot with Joe, you know. I sort of had a couple of, you know, a bit of a time with him in the States, went on a few adventures, but, you know, I weren't going around for dinner or anything like that. You know, Bez became very friendly. Yeah, he burnt, didn't he burn his 15th century tree down in his garden? Yes, he did, yeah. It's like a listed tree yeah, or something. he did, yeah, he did. <laughs> well, they're still friends after that. <laughs> so with the band and the creativity, um, looking back on it now, I mean, what, what do you think now, when you look back at, like I was asking this before, but I'm just interested in the younger Sean, it's very different from the older Sean, isn't it? Or, or is it, are, you, are you quite similar, really? Mm, yeah, no, I mean, I've, uh, it, I think Sean now just would not have done what younger Sean did, you know, uh, but, you know, obviously I'm older and uh, slowed down a bit. But that's very very wise, isn't it, that you got off that treadmill? Because rock and roll can be a treadmill as well, yeah. can't it? Yeah, no, I mean, again, uh, you know, once I decided to get myself straight, you know... Uh, what, what was that to say? Just when, basically because I did 40 and I didn't want to look a cunt. But other people carry on, though, don't they? Yeah, well, I, I just didn't, you know, I didn't want to... Uh, I didn't want to be... Uh, I was quite sort of like... You know, no, I just can't. I'm, I'm 40. I was like, really, I can't. I shouldn't be doing this. I mean, I know a lot of people think that's an easy thing to do, but I think that's an incredibly, quite a difficult choice and quite and a very surprisingly sensible choice. Mm. Yeah, well, again, I probably got really sensible when I got off. Uh, <laughs> but then I got completely fucking wrapped up in the old ADHD bollocks again, didn't I? That all sort of hit me. It was like, you know, going through post traumatic stress as well, mm. you know. So you had to deal with a lot of things about yourself. Yeah, I mean, and again, you know, I mean, all this sort of, you know, we're all off our tits while we could be coming in the public eye and things like that, you know, and then, you know, what was it? You know, 20 years of doing it and more longer and then I stopped taking everything and there I am, sort of like fucking, sort of the same as, as, as before I'd even started getting off my face. So you just, in a way, you kept putting it off, but one day you had to have the day of reckoning. Yeah, yeah, the day of reckoning. And what was it, what was it once you got, once you kind of faced up to all that, was life a lot easier? Well, it became a lot easier when I got my own special needs teacher. I mean, Joanne recognised straight away that, you know, I had some sort of condition, you know, so... Uh, she's an amazing woman, isn't she? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, she, I, was, I would go as far as say she's probably saved your life. Definitely saved my life, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, she was, she was a, she was a special needs uh, teacher, or special needs, uh, what do you call them, uh, teaching assistant, but special needs. So, yeah. So she saw something in you beyond the persona, beyond... Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, she did years ago. I mean, you know, I, you know we, I met 
Joanne when she was 17 uh, at the Hacienda and we went out on a double date, her best mate and my best mate. And my mate got together with her best mate. They got married and everything. But Joanne binned me because the band was just about to take off. I was in under that long. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and we stayed in each other's companies because, you know, uh, in, in, she was in our circle because of, uh, you know, uh, our old tour manager. Yeah, so does she say to you? Well, she got rid of me. You know, went, <laughs> she went, no, we're not, we're, it's not happening because uh, you're just going to make a cunt of me. Your yeah. band's just about to take off and, you know, you're going to be shagging around all over the place and, and, and I'm, I, I will either kill you. Uh, I, <laughs> so, yeah, oh, you know, and you're not taking the piss out of me. That's a very smart thing to do. So that in a way... And then when I hit 40, yeah. she, she wheeled me back in. Yeah, so, I mean, she wasn't, I, I'm guessing here, but she wasn't waiting but for you to come back from the madness, but... No, I mean, no, no, not at all. But we both ended up uh, around each other all the time, you know. But did you have, like, a little, little thing in your heart for her? Oh, yeah, always, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because you saw her as not only as a beautiful woman, but somebody who, who was actually a strong woman. Yeah, oh, absolutely, and she, yeah. she wouldn't, wouldn't take any shit. Absolutely no shit. Yeah, I mean, what do you do for her the other way around? I mean, apart from all the obvious stuff, but, you know, and she's like... So well, I just say, yeah, do what, you know what I mean? Yeah. So what a good marriage relies on just me, you know, the man just saying, fucking, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> do what she tells me. I can deal with that. I like the way you've embraced the straight world. It's quite, you know, you like being at home, you like watching the telly, you like being with your kids. Yeah. I mean, most rock stars, they still have that itch to be rock stars. and you. Well, I, I do get to do that, don't I? You know, I mean, you know, it's like with the Black Grape and the Mondays, you know. I mean, I enjoy that more now than I ever did when I was younger. Like being on stage? Yeah, yeah. I mean, what do you feel, the crowd and the atmosphere and the energy and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, and, and, and totally, you know, enjoy... You know, what I'm, you know, you always get to the stage where you've sung songs too many times and you fucking hate them, but I've gone beyond that, you know, now. Because you like the reaction off the crowd? And, well, and yeah, like, and, and just because, you know, I mean, you know, I, you know we're, not, we're not the bestest of mates, the Mondays, you know, but, uh, you know, we, we, go, uh, we go on stage now and, and, and play better than ever. You know, we're all compass mente, we all play better than ever. I was at the whole bands. Yeah. Great when it's straight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good to coin a phrase. So, so, although our kid does look like he's been dead about ten years, but <laughs> but he's still here and he's still playing great bass. Actually, yeah. So that's the thing. I think older bands. I mean, you don't necessarily have to be mates. It's just you have to respect each other's yeah, talent, yeah. don't you? Yeah. I mean, but when I say that, it's just me and our kid. We just still don't get on. It's a deep thing, isn't it, with brothers? You still you kind of joined in a way, aren't you? Well, because we're brothers, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But this is the only thing when you go completely bald, you know. You've got fucking nothing to see. You know, that's what your hair's there for, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Well. Yeah. You know, fucking no eyelashes. It looks good now, though. You actually look like, it looks like your hair now. Yeah. yeah. And then I've got these put on. No, they're really good. That's got the right colour. Yeah. <laughs> that's quite nice. Just now, I, I just now got to get, you know, the, the right false eyelashes. Oh, of course, the eyelashes go as well, don't they? God, you, you, you forget about all the bits of hair that on your body, the, the yeah, eyelashes. Yeah. That, well, eyelashes make a real big difference to how you fucking look, don't they? Oh, yeah, massively. But at least you don't get hairy ears and a hairy nose. No, no, I don't, yeah. So there's, there is a win. Yeah. Oh, there's so much stuff goes up my nose now, though. Yeah. And I don't mean that. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've got no hair in it. Look, you know. <laughs> so creativity, has that changed now But since... Um, because it's like your life's in two halves in a, in a weird way. Isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the, you know, I, 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 I went dry for years. You know, I mean, that's the thing about you know drugs. You, you know, when you're young and you start off and you get all creative and everything, and then you know later you just dried up to fuck. What well, I did. Oh, wait, you mean the words dry up? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, so uh, you know, but uh, you keep going long enough and it sort of comes back. So you know. So how did you get it back? Was it just came. As quick as it fucking went, it came back. Do you have to be more disciplined with it? Do you have to sit down and write a song? Or no, I still work in exactly the same way. Still it's like a little turn of phrase comes yeah, to your head. Yeah. And can you hear the whole song in that turn of phrase? Well, 
again, you know, I can't keep focused on, 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 because, <laughs> you know, so much, I'm, I'm trying to do something and then boom, I've gone on to something else. So, you know, that's what I've always had to do with songs, you know, uh, it's about four or five, probably, you know, four or five different things go on in my head and then I have to find something to make these fucking things fit together. So it's some sort of story. So the song will be lots of little different bits yeah. stuck together. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so how, do, how do you remember them all? Do you record them or do you write them down? Uh, I, I, still, uh, I still write on bits of paper, you know, uh, and then you've got the phone, speak it. Oh, so it's like loads of mum yeah. mumbling. And also it's keeping the, uh, you know, the, the, the tune, you know what I mean? Because a lot of times, if I forget the tune in my head that I've got the words to, then the words completely fuck up. So, you know, <laughs> I've got to go. <laughs> so, with the, with the album, Visits from Future Technology, I mean, it was mostly recorded 10 years ago. Yeah. Or were you, did you change any of it around before it came out? Uh, well, I mean, it, you know, obviously, we, we, we didn't really change the lyrics. No, I mean, it was more, you know, uh, Recorded, re-recorded a couple of lyrics, few uh, vocals, and then just remastered it. And then Sonny fucked about with some of the, you know, with the tunes. I mean, that was ten years ago, wasn't it? Yeah. So, and I think you told me this. I don't know if you made it up, but you just found the record. You oh, you, you came. Oh, up I made with, it. You up. came <laughs> up with that one. Said so what? Well, you found it down the back of the set. And I said to you. I'm that, John. I'm going to tell everybody that. Which so what really happened then? Well, what happened was, I mean, look, the album, you know, we always wanted it out. I always wanted it out. And, you know, we'd got a 12-inch single out a couple of years before. McGee got it put out. And then when we went into lockdown, it was, Alan, look, get that, get your album out, dust it, give it a dust over, which is exactly what we did. And, you know, fucked about with it during the lockdown. And... And you know, then there it is, ready to go. So, so when you when you listen back to it, was it like in your head? Did you think, oh, well, I'm sick of all those tunes? But when you listen back to it, it's like, oh god, these are actually pretty good. These. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I've always thought, you know, you know, it's because it's you know, it's odd. I like odd, you know. So uh, yeah, it is. It, it is. Well, it's off kilter like everything you yeah. do, but it sounds like pop music, yeah. like everything you do. I don't know how you do that. Oh, I don't. No, it's obviously. Something to do with the ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I think you've got pretty broad taste in music. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And Tony's quote about Manchester Kids having the best record collections, I think, is probably your record collection. Because it was so, you go Bee Gees, ABBA, Sex oh, yeah, Pistols. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Captain Beefheart, Frank yeah. Zappa, you know. And you listen to it all, you don't listen to it as underground or overground, just mumbles. <laughs> but you listen to it as a whole thing, then it's all pop music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, everything's pop music to me. Mm. So it's all pop music. I don't use, see it as an insulting word. No, I don't. I think it's, it's a brilliant way to look at music. Mm. Yeah. So you'd be taking little bits, a little bit of Frank Zappa and a little bit of ABBA, yeah. mixing all up in yeah. your head and come up. Yeah, I mean, it was like at first I couldn't get my head round, you know, like, you know, uh, when we was doing Squirrel and G-Man and Bum, you know, uh, and we, we need a pop album, you know, to me, well, right, it's a pop, pop, pop album, you know what I mean? And then I got the concept of, what you know, what is a pop album and what's, you know... More but even when it. you got to your most pop, like a couple of albums later, it still sounded a little bit wonky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think you'll get anything else but wonky with, uh, with me. But they were hits, weren't they? So they were, yeah, pop, they were yeah, yeah. pop, weren't they? I mean, yeah. whatever people consider pop had to include you after that, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. So with the solo albums, the same thing, isn't it? It's a pop record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. To me, it's a, it's a pop record. So. But even though it's a ten-year-old record, it didn't sound out of date either, which I thought no, was quite odd. It sounded quite yeah. fresh. Well, I mean, it's obviously because we played it to quite a few people, and you either got it or you didn't. You know, I mean, there was so many times, you know. You know, there's people saying it's underproduced, you know, and it's... it's a, no, it sounded slick to me. Yeah. I mean, not slick, to, to dead slick, you know, but like, like a record show. Yeah. I mean, it's programmed a lot, of it, isn't it? You can't, you can't get slicker than programming, can you? And, and the, the guitar playing sounds fantastic. Yeah. And it's slightly different because some of it's quite stonesy, I thought. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's a bit like that desert African blues. These, these, which is all sorts going on. Yeah, yeah, I could hear little bits and things. Yeah. But it also, it's very much you. It could have been any record from any point of your career, really. Mm. I mean, how much were you involved in creating the music for that? Well, obviously, well, Sonny's creating the music, I'm there. 
mm, so do you say can you do a bit that's a bit like this and can you make the guitar a bit like that or you do, or one of those little tunes you sing in your phone yeah some you know i mean it's sunny i mean i'm totally was right on i mean i didn't really have to say you know do that or do you know so i was just bang on with uh you know and it's, it seems much lighter because uh, the other side of record did, when was that? That's like 20 years ago. Remember that one you did, quite dark and claustrophobic? You mean uh, Amateur Night? Yeah, yeah. Well, Amateur Night, look, I didn't even know, I didn't even know I'd done that. You know, I mean, I was, I was just totally shocked when I got back in England, you know, and, and I'm there having to promote an album which has been called my first solo album. You know, I mean, I was, when I'd stayed on in Australia, you know, I was, I was finished, you know, and I cold turkey to fuck. And, uh, you know, uh, addicted to all, you know, not just the heroin and va fucking Valium and fucking coke and crap, fucking crystal fucking meth, you name it. And uh, so, and then I Pete just thought it'd be a good idea to keep my brain busy, you know. So uh, I, I didn't even, you know, I mean, I overstayed in Australia by six months, so I got myself a, a ban, and, I, and you know, but uh, and then when I get back here, and I've, I, your first solo album, I'm like, fucking hell, right? Okay, yeah. I mean, with, with that record, I mean, I know nobody ever listens to their own records. When you think about that record, you think that's a snapshot of a very different place, a very different shore. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, again on that, I was totally lyrically dry. You know, any. I mean, what our people wanted to do was. Look, just anything that comes in your head, don't you have to fucking make it into a song? You know, I mean, I think Pete was, you know, very fucking experimental. <laughs> I mean, I like the records. It's just, it just, it's a dark record, though. I mean, oh God, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, fucking hell, yeah. With, with I was completely raving fucking mad. Whereas now that record is, it's. I like what I like about it, it's got domestic, it's got domesticity in it. It's got putting the kettle yeah. on, but but in a way that's still quite weird and warped. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can't do anything else. So it's in a much happier place. Oh God, yeah, it? yeah. I mean, 10 years ago, I was, I was in a, a, a well happier place, you know. I mean, that was really, I'd come, I'd just finished that, came back over here and then got, uh, oh, you're going in the jungle. And Rash, Elliot Rashman was managing me. And when I came out, Elliot wasn't, he decided to, walk out on the music business again. And then the guy that took over managing uh, wasn't interested in putting the album out. You know, he just wanted, he wanted me to carry on and uh, build up, uh, you know. Profile. Profile, yeah, you know, on, on, on another problem with profile by doing telly. Which works. Yeah, yeah, it works. Look, I'm not, it, was a, it was a good decision. I'd, you know, I mean, and now when I, I mean, I'd wanted that record out for a long time, but I mean, again, when I think about it now, it's come out at the right time. Yeah, you need both, don't you? Because basically your main thing's music. Yeah. And the TV's all there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, with the TV thing, I mean, what, what, how do you work, approach that? I mean, if you don't like being on stage that much, how does it work in front of loads of cameras? Well, I do, I do like, I do like being on stage now. You know, it, this is, you know, when I've, you know, we're going back on that, but, uh, no, I mean, it's different on, on t look, I mean, it's like, you know, when I, 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 when a son step on at the ITV Awards, you know, and he's, you don't think, really, I weren't thinking that there's, you know, 10 million people out there watching it live on telly. You know, it's just so, you know, uh, um, you know so it doesn't, uh, you know, when you're filming stuff for TV, there's not that many people about anyway. Yeah, yeah, so it's actually probably less than there is in the band. Oh, yeah. 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 So do you find, you? When you do those things, you, you are yourself, aren't you? You don't, I mean, I'm sure when you're in the jungle, there's a lot of people in that space, like, put, like projecting. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. I, oh, absolutely, and people have got a plan and this and that, you know, but, uh, you know, I mean, oh, I just wait there, you know, I mean, I, you know, obviously, like, you know, in the, in the music game that I've been in for years, it's, all, it's a bit more like, you know, the man in black and moody and mysterious, isn't it? Which is, uh, you know, but by the time I'd got to the age, I think I was, what, 48 when I went in the jungle? Uh, you know, so that's the right time not to be the, the moody rocker, in it. You know what I mean? Just, just who you are now, you know, so. Uh, the more you are yourself, the more 
you stand out. It's quite weird, isn't it? Yeah, yeah well, yeah. You know. I mean, do you, um, and the same with Bez as well, because he just himself, isn't he? Yeah. That's kind of what works. Yeah. I mean, do you ever like ring each other up and swap notes, or is it just... Like, no, you know, no, no, no. I mean, you know, look, we had ourselves when we're doing, you know, a doggle box, but we do, we do, we are aware of what we're doing. We are aware we've got to say something funny. It's not like we're trying too hard or anything, you know what I mean? It's, you know, but, uh, you know, that's... I think what kind of works for that, it actually looks like if you two were sat in front of the telly and no one's filming it, it yeah. would just be the same conversation. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Which is, isn't that what you've always been from the start, though? The very first Monday's interviews? Yeah. There was no... Oh, we had no filter, yeah. It's just It was just you. No, we got no filter. It's like my, you know, my daughter now with, with the ADHD, she has no filter. Absolutely no filter, and uh, and 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 that can be a, a good thing, <laughs> <laughs> and really funny, yeah. and then it can also be fucking crazy. So, so, have your daughters got the same thing, or is it just one daughter? Or one daughter has been diagnosed. Yeah. Uh, I have two daughters diagnosed. Mm -hmm. The older one, Jail is thirty. She has it. She's ADD. Uh, and Lulu's ADHD, uh, and then uh, me other two are not diagnosed, uh, I'm, I, so I'm not going to go into that. Yeah, I was more interested that if you got it and you meet someone else who's got it, how does that work? Do you, you, do you recognise it straight away? Look, it's like with Lulu, right? I can hold myself. I mean, sometimes, I, you know, I can just go, no matter what. I, I, gone you know I can't control I mean I I've, I've got I've got techniques now and this and that and you know certain sort of what I use my medication which isn't uh, the amphetamine based stuff uh, but uh, you know and, and I can I'm aware where as a 13 year old girl isn't you know what I mean so uh, I can sort of uh, hold back with Lulu. Yeah, yeah, because you understand what things, yeah. the trigger points, in it, in a way. On, yeah. yeah. So, like, so in this period of your life now, the happy settled down, Sean, it seems incredible. Well, I've been happy and settled. I mean, this is a thing. Well, well it's been I've 10 been, years. I've been with Joanne now for 18 years. You know, 2004. But you're more creative and busy now than... I yeah, yeah. Yo, absolutely, yeah. I mean, like, you're, you are the hardest working man in show business now. Well, McGee says that. I mean, I actually, you know, I don't feel, you know, I mean, I, I don't take as many jobs as, as I could take, and I feel like I'm working. I mean, this, it's, it, when you think about what you do, what you did as a, what we did as a young, young men, you know, basically, you make an album, right? Uh, then you go and tour it for three years, and go and make another album, go and tour it for three years, make another album, go and tour it for three years, make another album, go and tour it for three years. You know, we did that and really it was like a little gap when I turned it over to Black Grape, but did the same. So you know, no wonder you end up fucking insane when you're already a bit. Yeah, There's two bands, a solo career, yeah. so it's like a lot of records, isn't it? So, you know, I mean, I don't do, you know, we're not doing the touring and making albums and touring. I mean, that takes a lot out of you. But you just do it, don't you? When you're young, you just do it. You do play a lot, though. I mean, before the pandemic and maybe a little bit afterwards, but it's... Um... Oh, yeah. I mean, even during the pandemic, I was working. Mm. I mean, so, like, the moment, there's a lot of creativity going on. Do you... Well, we, we, we're now setting up to go and do uh, another solo album and another Black Grave album. So is that because the, the last... Is that inspired by the last solo album finally coming out? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we was already doing... Another Black Grape album. Well, that was well, that. Well, now you know. I mean, so I'm doing another solo, another Black. I mean, Black Grape. So that's what Alan's setting up at the moment. Mm. So it's Alan sort of build a bit of structure for you to work. Yeah, Alan looks after all the music stuff, and then Joanne looks after all the TV stuff. So with, with the next solo album, will it be the same? I mean, obviously, I haven't written it yet, so you don't know. No, is it the same so ish ballpark? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. And, how, and, is, and is that creative process, is that way writing changed now, out the other side of the pandemic, or is it sending files backwards and forward? 
Uh, well, uh, uh, hopefully on, on when they go and do the solo album, I'll probably go over to either, we'll, we'll do what we did last time, I'll go over to the States, maybe Sonny will come over here or whatever, but uh, we certainly, you know, you know, we don't need to be using big studios anymore and, and doing it, you know, doing that, which is great. Yeah, I mean, that's the way you make records now, you just do them at home, which is... Yeah. I mean, it's like young kids now, you know, I mean, they can stand at a bus stop and go to school and make a fucking album on the phone, you know, on their iPad. It's amazing, isn't it? Brilliant. You know, with good quality. Yeah, yeah. You know, insane. And you never have to leave the house. No, no. <laughs> I was thinking about Elvis. I was watching the Elvis documentary. It's like Elvis never left his bedroom. He would stay in his bedroom in Graceland's, right? Then when it was time to go and do a gig or somewhere, he'd get on his plane get in his bedroom on his plane, get off, go and do, uh, get to Vegas, go in his bedroom, then go down and do the show, do the shows, go back to his bedroom, get to the plane, get the plane in the bedroom, then back to, then he never got out of his bedroom. And is that, is that the ambition now? Well, that's, I'm pretty sort of almost like Elvis at the moment. <laughs> but just a slightly different geography. Yeah. 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 <laughs> And you do, you do a lot of collaborations and people always ring up to collabs. With yeah, I get loads of that. I mean, I don't, I just don't do them. I mean, you know, the ones that I'd, I'd just done recently, you know, with Lee, Scratch Penny, and, and uh, Tricky, uh, and the Noel one, and uh, who am I forgetting? I forgot somebody. Robbie, uh, but you know, I mean, I'm not gonna say uh, no. So, yeah, no. I mean, what's the criteria? Just because they'd be interested in ideas or just interested people to work with? Both, ideas and, and, and people, yeah. And what, do, what do they ask you to bring? Although I don't know when they'll ever come out. <laughs> yeah, because they just mess around them for ages afterwards. Yeah, I mean, I just, you know. Was that after the Gorillas one? Was that, was that the one that sparked all that? Well, the Gorillas one is now 2004, five. You know, that's, fucking, what's that? 16, 17, 18 years ago, is it? Yeah, it's 17, yeah. So I mean, yeah. yeah. You know, so, yeah, I mean, that's since, you know, since that, yeah, you know, fucking six, you know, get about six a day, seven days a week asking me do I want to do it. So what's the criteria? Do you think that person's interesting to work with or? Yeah, not if I can be bothered. Yeah, yeah. 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 It takes a lot to get me away from, uh, you know, Amazon movies and yeah. and Netflix and so Apple cheap. TV and, <laughs> and, 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 uh, and iPlayer. I mean, well, did they just send you, with, with Gorillaz or all these projects, they just send you the song and you just just mess about with it or? The Gorillaz one, no, I didn't get sent a song or anything with that, no. I mean, I was going to, to, up there to, to write, actually, and I, I was just dry as fuck, you know, but, I mean, that's why we got, it's going up, it's going up, it's going up, it's there. Mm. Uh, you know, that's, that's all I had in my head. And, and you got the words, did you get the title wrong or something? No, no, the, when I, that, it literally was, I said, it's dare, talking in text speak, it's dare. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, but it works, doesn't it? That's yeah. The mad thing. I mean, words, words don't always have to make any sense, do they? No. They sound good, they work. Listen, I mean, look, look, look at Abba's songs. When you analyse Abba's, they, they, they don't make, a lot of their songs don't make sense because they couldn't really speak English when they first started writing off in English, writing in English. You know, and there's, uh, there's a lot of stuff in their songs, but they just sound great. I mean, when you listen, I mean, when you hear some of your old songs every now and then, do they sort of change? You think, oh God, that means something completely different now, or, or what the hell was I going on about? <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I mean, look, I mean, again, because of, of how, you know, I, I sort of keep bouncing from idea to idea, and, and then just manage to, you know, string them all together. I mean, uh, I mean, what the fuck's Reverend Blackgrape about, really? It sounds like it's about every, everything and nothing yeah. all at the same time, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it is. <laughs> I know, but it's just genius in pop music, isn't it? It just sounded right. It's like when I'm writing with Sonny. You know, I mean, it's like, Sonny's great, because he'll just, you know, fucking, it doesn't matter if it makes sense or what. You know, if it sounds great, it sounds good. I mean, it's a criteria they just make you laugh and feel good. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Does he feel like a different person's writing them? They're just pouring out and you think, Where, where's this stuff coming from? Yeah, I never, I, I just never know where it comes from. Mm. You know, really, just, yeah. And is it, is it generally when you're walking the dog, when you haven't got your phones, you can't even write them down? 
Yeah. Well, I mean, when you when you when you have your, when you have got your phone, uh, yeah, you're speaking to it, yeah. I mean, do you ever worry that you you just lose ideas? I've lost loads of ideas, yeah, yeah. Do you think they, do you think they come back again? They go to a big circle and come back into your head? No, they probably go to the other side of the world and somebody else picks them up in their head. Oh, that thing like Tom Waits always said that they're just in the. Well, loads of times, right? When I've yeah. I've wrote like when I wrote Monster, right? I wrote Monster, uh, and then, you know, fucking six, eight months later, we had Lady Gaga Monster and Eminem Monster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, both came out before mine, but I, as far as I know, I, I'd done, already done mine, it didn't come out. Yeah, so they're always in the ether. Yeah, of course, it was 10 years before, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, you got, so with this book out now, are you working on another book? Uh, well, I got, I mean, I did a crazy thing, didn't I? I mean, Alan wrote me up and said, uh, do you want to do a book? Uh, it's one of them coffee table books. Oh, he said, oh, I've got you this book deal, coffee table book. Oh, well, right, okay. And I said, well, you know, I have got a, a book coming out. You know, I'll be a rock star. Oh, no, no, don't, don't say anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> fucking, can you imagine when the book company must have... Fucking God, Dolly. <laughs> so, I mean, like, the, the Art of Me a Rock Star book it was first, but then the other, the coffee table book, where they, you know, they're writing, telling stories about, you know, me. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, they managed to get theirs out first. And I don't think I did any press on that or anything. Mm. And is there any more? There'll always be books there, because I have a book uh, agent, don't I? So. Yeah. So they try and get a book out of you every year? I wouldn't say every year, but, you know. It's interesting now, because you are, what's it like being a national treasure? Because you've become the most unlikely national treasure. You're even more of an unlikely national treasure than Ben. Uh, yeah, I, I just, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I, it's just a word, isn't it? It's just a saying, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, but everybody knows who you are. And people like you, don't they? No matter what mad shit you get up to, what or whatever did in your well, life. It's funny when all my hair fell out and everything, right? Because nobody got on you for fucking ages, <laughs> you know. And and it wasn't even. And, and I'd gone and done Mastermind with with this, uh, and then it just showed you how many people also want to watch Mastermind because I'd done Mastermind like fucking months and months before, and then we went on Gogglebox, and it's like, what the fuck's happened to Sean Ryder? Is he dying of cancer? What's going on there? Oh, you've aged overnight. If you'd fucking age, you couldn't, if your fucking eyelashes fell out, not your fucking hair. No, you don't look, you look a bit ill. You fucking look a bit ill if your fucking eyelashes, eyebrows, and fucking hair gone. And this, this is the thing, you don't hide any of this. You just, you... That's the part. I mean, I know people in our business, you know, you know, I mean, if this had happened to Peter Andre, you know, or, 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 or fucking Jack Shepard out of Coronation Street, he wouldn't have come out from under his bed. Mm. Mm. They'd have, like, plastic surgery. Oh, yeah. Wigs and all this it's kind just, of thing. But, you know... You could almost get away with it if you hadn't said anything about it, but... Well, I, I, This is why it works, because you just tell people. Well, I mean, you know, going on looking like fucking Winston Churchill's big toe, you know, something's sort of fucking happened, hasn't it? You know what I mean? I mean, especially when, when lockdown came, you piled on the fucking weight. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, I really was looking uh, Churchill-esque, big toe-esque, fester-ish. <laughs> There's a song there. There's a chorus. It's an album. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thanks a lot, Sean. Oh, we do. Yeah. Brilliant, John. Yeah. yeah. Nice one. You can go back to your Elvis bedroom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm actually on fucking War and Hitler at the moment. You know, all these Hitlers fucking in a circle. Oh, oh yeah, and, and, and the D-Day landings and all these, and, and war factories. Yeah. All this fucking great shit, you know what I mean? Channel 5 used to have endless programs about... Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, and, and I've got Channel 5 on fucking any time, innit? You know, where you can watch all that. And yeah, yeah. Yesterday's brilliant. I like Yesterday. You know, yesterday's got like war factories and fucking, uh, you know, it's got, it's got Vietnam on it, it's got fucking World War II, uh, and then that great... One from the seventies with the uh, narrating, what's he called? Fucking the big thespian actor who did World at War. Oh yeah, another one. I remember World at War right. in the sixties. Yeah. Yeah, well, seventies it was, wasn't it? World at War. All our yesterdays. No, World at War, the documentary that was in the seventies with uh, what's he called? Lawrence Olivier. Yeah. yeah. As the narrator. I thought it was on when I was a little kid, I remember it. All Our Yesterdays was on. All oh, right, maybe I'm blurring it all up. With that Brian Baldany geezer. Uh, 
he did all our yesterdays. But World at War was like, came out about 1975 and it was this 26 part fully narrated. It's, it's the classic one. Yeah, so they've, they've digital, you know, they've digitally cleaned it and, and everything. And so it looks brand new and then all the old film when it's been digitally done. So Did they colour it in, all the old black and white? Uh, they've not done that on uh, on the World at War one, but they, they've coloured in a lot of the other stuff like the, that they're showing on. I love it when they do that. Yeah, oh, it's brilliant. It's, Suddenly all the people in it look like your next door neighbours yeah. and then it makes you realise how yeah. fucking horrible it is. Well, it's like when, you've, when I used to think back to, you know, the 1940s, I would think back in black and white. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, just seeing the colour brings it, you know, all oh, well, close, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, so, if you'd been twenty years older, that could have been you. Well, mm. or thirty, whatever it is. Yeah, well, it's that close, isn't it? Dad, I mean, I'm twenty years young. I mean, Dad's twenty was would be twenty years older than I am. I mean, I mean he missed national service, so uh, yeah, so a bit bit older. Than... Yeah, my dad was actually in the war. Yeah, was he? Yeah, not around now. Well, my granddad, my granddad. I've just done this TV show where uh, they, they go and do me DNA and everything. So it's come back. We come from... Oh, fucking hell. See, this is a fucking... It goes down your mother's side, doesn't it? Well, the, right. So we're Irish from... Uh, oh, from fucking... See, County Mayo. Yeah. But my DNA is Irish, Scottish, Welsh, Norwegian. Wow, Viking. So I'm an Irish Scottish pissed up Welsh Viking. So your so your dad when he had the Viking hat on knew something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. that's a good mix, that isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah. <laughs> so that's to come out yet. Yeah. And I got to meet these relatives that I didn't know I had. Oh really? One was a scouser. One of them, the other one, grew up round the corner because she was. They come from the Fletcher line, which was my mum's mum's maiden name before. Yeah, my Carol, uh, and and she'd lived near me. All, all we didn't know. I never knew her. And then and, and this this scouse kid turned up. We got to meet these, these fucking people that are related. Was, it, was any of them like you at all? Uh, like a slight resemblance. Typical. The woman was very Fletcher esque. Yeah, yeah. She had these amazing colours on, like fucking some red Indian squad. Because my Granny Fletcher just had really dark skin with black hair and looked like proper soap and Sue. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. But uh, I've got none of that going on in my DNA. Oh yeah, that would be great to find that, wouldn't it? Yeah, from the um, the Buffalo Bill sir. Yeah, yeah. Thing. yeah it's, it's such a great. Story. Well, you know Wayne, my role manager Wayne. Yeah, yeah. He is. He, oh, is he? Yeah. The, his blood. They. It's a very deep, uh, fucking uncommon uh, bloodline for that uh, Indian. You know uh, what they call Dakota. Fucking yeah, yeah. That's his blood. It's, uh, it's it's a real. And I've got a picture of the chief that came over here to Salford. Fucking hell, it's Wayne. Oh, what's it look really like? It just looks like Wayne. <laughs> so the chief, the chief had, a, had a bit of a night out. The Salford there. people hid him, didn't they? And obviously they bred. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, I, I love that story. It's yeah. a great story, yeah. isn't it? And they felt at home in Salford because Salford yeah. was all out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. Brill. Great to see you, Sean. Let's do a picture yeah, before you picture. go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good.